What is up, YouTube? This is DEFCON 3 Security coming at you from somewhere here on Spaceship Earth. Uh, today's question was brought up a few times this week. Um, some people brought up the question and then a couple of other people chimed in and they said, hey, uh, don't do this, don't do that. And there was a little bit of um, conflict there and trying to answer the question. So I figured I would squash this conflict and give you my thoughts on it and and hopefully um, you guys can take something out of it and formulate your own opinion so the question is um, how do you respond to an active shooter if you are an unarmed guard versus an armed guard all right so here's the deal guys our basic job as security is to observe and report it is not to chase down an active shooter it is not to get a better view of the person while they're shooting so that you can report their identity better um, it's basically just to stay alive and report what you saw that is the basic of security right at the end of the day you want to go home to your family I don't know about you, but I am not trained in tactical shooting. Yes, I have taken classes. I've gone to the gun range. But the bottom line is, if somebody is out there and they're shooting an AR, an AK-47, you name it, or heck, even a handgun and they are bent on killing people, one of those bullets could have your name on it. And you are absolutely useless if you're dead. Now, in the midst of this shooting, people will panic. There are people that do not know how to respond to gunfire. They will freak out. They will tra uh, trample other people. Uh, they, they, you know, a lot of bad things can happen. Your job is to, and it's not even your job actually, right? Remember, your job is just to observe and report. But if you want, you can try to help people out of the exit. You can direct traffic. Say, everybody, go out this way. Go, go. There's somebody. There's an active shooter. You can do that, and you would get the Heroes Award at the end of the day. You don't need to go in there and start shooting them back. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm sure your company would not want you to go in there and try to shoot this guy. If you are unarmed, you definitely don't want to try to get in there and you know try to choke out this person with a gun. And I've heard some people say, man... I would try to get behind them and grab them and like, bro, that ain't going to happen. It really won't. So don't even don't even go there. Um, just try to keep yourself alive. Try to keep yourself safe. If you have a level head to you, try to get other people out. When the police arrive on the scene, your information will be crucial in helping them determine how to negotiate the obstacle that's in front of them. So you can say, oh, it was one guy. It was three guys. The guy seemed like he had a big gun. I don't know what kind of gun it was, but it was big. And they can, you know, deduct it. Okay, well, it's not a handgun. Maybe it's an AR. Maybe it's an AK. Or you can say, I don't know. He had like this really small gun and it could have been a revolver. And they're like, okay, well, we know that he's not, you know, loaded with a bunch of magazines. He's got to reload with a revolver. You know, these, these little things will really help out the cops. Uh, you going in there. Trying to be the hero of the day and getting shot in the first five seconds and being dead does not help anything out. Having said that, if you are unarmed and that guy's coming at you and you know there is no way out, man, you better go out kicking and punching. If that guy is like within close quarters and you know he's about to cap you, yeah, you, then you could try to choke him out or, you know, go for the throat. Um, but other than that, no, man, duck, hide, dude, be a coward if you have to. I'm telling you, you, I'd be the first person to hide under a table and wait for the smoke to clear before I pop my head up. You know, there is no shame in trying to stay alive. It's like the basic human emotion to want to stay alive. So, um, don't think you're being a coward, right? If you're, um, trying to hide and wait for the smoke to clear, especially if you're unarmed. You really have nothing to bring to that fight. Uh, if you are armed and you've got a clear shot, take it. But make sure it's a clear shot. Because imagine if you miss and then that guy now knows that you're hiding there 
and you're shooting at him, he's going to shoot back at you. Now, when I say I'm not a tactical shooter, dude, like I said, shooting at the range, shooting at some, learning at some class for like a day, you know, they have you jump and bob and weave, you know, that has some advantages to it, but you can never prepare for the sound of gunfire coming directly at you. That's something that you just sort of learn right there on the spot and people react differently. I know the first time I was at a range and somebody was shooting a 50 caliber gun next to me, I'm over here just, you know, pinking away, bing, bing, bing. All of a sudden I hear boom and I just flinch. I'm like, whoa, the hell was that? The dude next to me was shooting a 50 caliber gun and that thing just, it, it, it did something to me. I was like, wow, that was too much. And then I tried to like, realign on my target and then he shot again boom and i'm like damn dude i can't concentrate because it was just so loud and a reverberation from his booth was going through my chest and it took me a moment to get used to that right so you don't know how you're going to respond during gunfire especially if it's aimed at you that stress might just be too much so for that reason unless you have some amazing training Man, I don't think I would pop my head up. I would just make sure that I keep the people safe. And if I have a clear shot, right, that guy's 10, 15 feet away from me and I know I'm not going to miss, I'll take it. Now, this is just me, but I might even put my life on the line if it translates into saving other people's lives. I would probably go that extra mile. As long as I'm not endangering other people, um... Or if there's, uh, in the background, there's other people, right? And if I miss him, it's going to hurt somebody on the other side. I would probably take the shot knowing that, damn, you might just die if you don't finish this person. It's not like the movies too, man. Sometimes you shoot somebody one, two, or five times. They will continue shooting at you. So just because you pulled off one good shot doesn't mean you're going to stop this guy. Um, you know, and that's something to worry about. Yeah, you, you popped up, you got one off on him. Uh, that adrenaline might go through his system. He might just unload on you. And if he's got a, a high capacity magazine and you're stuck with a, a 10 round magazine because that's what California dictates you should have, uh, you're not, you're not going to have the odds in your favor. So, you know, I just tell people if it's an active shooter, the main thing is to try to keep other people safe. But most importantly, keep yourself safe. All that's required of you is to observe and report. It is not to save the day. If you have the shot, take it. If not, stay low. If the guy gets really close to you and you have to utilize your firearm, by all means, use it. If you can get out of the building, get out of that building, dude. They don't pay you enough, nor do you have the training to, to take down somebody like that. Now, my channel has tons of people and I know some of you guys, as far as your expertise levels, they're like up here. Some of you guys have done different tours in the military and your expertise level is up here. People like me and uh, other folks on my channel, we're not, you know, we're not at that level. So I'm, I'm catering to the people that don't really have that kind of experience and could make things worse rather than better uh, if something like that breaks out. So again, my... Advice to you, keep yourself safe. Try to get out the building as quick as possible. If you manage to bring some civilians out with you, uh, you're a hero right there. Again, security, it's a scary job. I'll tell you right now that most likely, uh, if you ever encounter a gun incident, you're not going to have time to think about it. If you look at any video on YouTube on security guard overwhelmed by gunfire, you'll find it happens quicker than you can think. I was watching a video of, of a weed dispensary in Oakland. It was uh, it was on the news and security guard was just sitting back. Guy walked into a dispensary, boom, pulled out, let off some rounds on the security guard, game over. He didn't have time to pull his gun out or rack his gun or any of that. Uh, that's how quickly it ends, guys. It's it, it you know, I tell you to, to keep your keep yourself alert, uh, be aware of your surrounding, but sometimes even all of that. Um, hey, yeah, it's a dangerous job. And that's why I tell you, don't work for freaking $12 an hour, $13 an hour if you have a firearm. Because it's just, you're not just there um, 
to keep something safe, you're putting your life on the line every single day. Yes, we are not cops and we don't see as much action as they do, but we are more likely to die than cops. Think about that. Cops are getting paid more per hour, yet they die less often than security guards. So when you're out there, man, making 13 bucks an hour, remind yourself, dude, this job, is it really worth putting my life on the line for for 13? It's not even worth it at $30 an hour to put your life on the line, but somebody's got to do it, right? That's why I always tell you, know your damn value, know your worth, above all, be safe.